My name is David Pedowitz. I'm a foot and ankle surgeon at the Rothman Institute. And today we're going to talk about chronic Achilles tendon rupture with an FHL transfer. This case is a 78-year-old male who is a year and a half out from a primary Achilles repair. He presented with weakness and push-off and then relayed to us a new history of having fallen early in his initial post-operative period, where maybe he felt a stretching out, but he thought nothing of it. He presented with a well-heeled incision, but a positive Thompson test, a normal gait, but couldn't single leg heel rise. He had a palpable thinning underneath his incision. As you can see here in the MRI, there's an Achilles tear, which is basically stretched out. This is probably when he felt that stretch after that initial surgery, and the MRI clearly shows that. So the patient's unhappy with his function. I don't think that there are any non-surgical options for him at this point as he's now a year and a half out and really knows that he's unsatisfied with his non-surgical care. So my plan at this point was a secondary repair with a possible gastrocnemius recession, a flexor house as long as tendon transfer, and to try and do this through minimally invasive means, otherwise he would need at least a nine inch incision. So my planned procedure was gonna be done under general anesthesia in the prone position with a popliteal block with five planned incisions. The most proximal one for the gastroc recession, the middle one or the next one down for accessing the proximal limb of the Achilles tear, the next more distal incision for the distal limb of the Achilles tear, and then two small incisions on either side of the calcaneus for the calcaneal anchors. So this is an example of us going through the more proximal incision to get the more proximal stump. You can see we have the proximal Achilles and we've isolated it there. In the more distal incision that we've now exploited, you can see deep in that incision, we not only have the distal limb of the tendon, but we have the flexor hallucis longus tendon. With tension under that tendon, it is then cut and then tagged with a fiber loop stitch that uh, has a needle on the end of it. At this point, we brought the flexor hallucis longus tendon and muscle belly through the proximal incision. This prevents the tendon that we want to transfer from getting wound up in the pin that we're going to put in the calcaneus and then subsequently over ream. This is an example of us putting that pin in into the posterior tuberosity of the calcaneus. And as you can see, we've now passed that pin through the plantar aspect of the calcaneus and then over reamed it. Now we're reaming to, but not through the plantar cortex then transferring the flexor hallucis longus tendon into that bony tunnel, and then fixing it with a tenodesis screw. And this is just an example of us securing that fixation. This is all done with the ankle in plantar flexion. Now for the more proximal limb, we decided to use the PAR system. The PAR system basically places suture tape through the proximal limb. We are able to pass locking sutures, and those sutures are then brought through the more distal incision. We passed all five sutures through the guide. We then free up the sutures and then just pull out the guide. It's a little more resistance than you would think, but it's not terribly difficult. So at this point, we're gonna place a suture passer through the distal limb of the Achilles, bringing the more proximal sutures through to the distal incision and then secure them with anchors. So this is an example of us using the PARS on this specific patient. We've brought the sutures through the proximal limb, and generally what we do is we cycle them approximately 17 times to get out any creep or slack that is still remaining in the system. The sutures are then gonna be brought distally through two small incisions over the calcaneus. And you can see right here that there's a little eyelet at the bottom of the suture passer, and this allows us to bring those more proximal sutures through the distal limb. This is what it looks like when you pull on those distal sutures, which then reapproximate the two tendon ends very nicely. Finally, with these sutures brought through the plantar aspect of the heel, the Achilles is then secured in the calcaneus with two swivel lock anchors. This is all done with the ankle and plantar flexion, and it is important that we countersink these two anchors to prevent any residual postoperative heel pain. In order to make sure that the anchors are countersunk, it is useful to place a marking on the handle, which corresponds to the length of the anchor, so that once you've dialed down and tightened the anchor, you know that the anchor has gone down at least the distance of the anchor, and then a little bit more, just to make sure it's a little countersunk. And this is the final construct. The patient's in nearly maximal equinus. They have had a gastroc recession. You have the five incisions as planned, and this is what it looks like from the side. This patient was placed in a short leg cast bivalve for two weeks. 
then an Achilles boot in Aquinas for four more weeks, weight bearing as tolerated for that month, then started physical therapy. This is a video of this patient six months postoperatively. You can see how they're walking with a very nice gait. They do have some push off strength. He is working on his balance a little bit, but this less invasive technique has really allowed me to push these patients to where they wanna be a little bit earlier than I used to be comfortable with. It has given me the assurance that I can do the procedure that used to be done for me with a nine or 10 inch incision through very small incisions, which I think not only makes me feel more comfortable about a lower wound complication rate, but makes me feel comfortable about the surgical fixation that I get with the tendon. Thank you.